Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, wa nahmaduhu, wa nasta'inuhu, wa nastaghfiruhu, wa na'uzu billah min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina. Man yahdihillahu falamudillallah, wa man yudlillahu falahadiyala. Ashadu an la ilaha illallahu wahdahu la sharika la, anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Ya ayyuhal lazina amanutuku allaha haqqa tukatihi, wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Ya ayyuhal nas, attaku rabbukum alazi khalakakum min nafsin wahida, wa khalakam minha zawjaha. وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالٌ كَثِيرٌ وَنِسَاءٌ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْكَامَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَحَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَكُلُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا أَمَّا بَعْدُ All thanks and praise belong to Allah we seek help and forgiveness only from Allah and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil within ourselves and the consequences of our evil deeds. And whosoever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whosoever Allah leads astray will never find guidance. And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah alone without any partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad wasallam is his servant and his messenger. Or you have believed, fear Allah and speak words of appropriate justice. He will amend for you your deeds, forgive you your sins, and whoever obeys Allah and his messenger certainly has attained a great attainment. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The last time we met, um, we continued the series of talking about the 99 names of Allah. And I discussed three of the names last time. Talked about Al-Razak, Al-Fatah, and Al-Alim. Al-Razak -Al is the provider, that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created the means for sustenance and is a provider of sustenance. And Al-Fatah is the opener. He's the one who reveals and, or opens that which is unknown uh, previously to us or is unclear. And Al-Alim is the omniscient, the all-knowing. There's nothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not know about or that is hidden from him. Today, we continue this journey and we talk about the next six names, Al-Qabid, Al-Basid, Al-Khafid, Al-Rafi, Al-Mu'iz, and Al-Mudil. Now, why the next six names? Primarily because these are the names of Allah that are referenced as pairs. And the theme of these attributes is opposites. And today, inshallah, I hope to give you enough details about these attributes so that we all may have better understandings about our creator. Let's start with Al-Qabid and Al-Basit, the one who contracts and the one who expands. He takes away as he pleases from those who have plenty and distributes them to those who are weak and needy. And he gives more when he pleases to a point where they need no more. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who takes away our soul and is also the one who gives us a soul when we, are, when we enter into this world. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala constricts the heart and expands the heart. Now, linguistically speaking, the root word of qabid is ka, ba, and da, which means to withhold, to make scarce, to grasp, or to take possession. And the root word of basit is ba, sa, and ta which means to expand or to grant with abundance or to make spacious. Now, I like to think about this in terms of our heart or kalb. And because it is a place where we feel this range of contraction and expansion in our daily lives, it's a good way to think about, at least in my mind, about these two attributes of Allah. Now, let's consider the times when we read the Quran. As we come across verses in the chapters that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about punishing those who have transgressed whether against Allah or his creations or against themselves, this puts a sense of fear in our hearts. So if we think about Allah as being somebody who's constantly watchful and if we have that feeling within us, this expansion or contraction is, is that fear that we feel in our hearts. And this feeling inside of us, this fear question, makes us question about our lives and how we have lived it up to this point. We don't know when our time is, is up in this world and that's part of the reason why this drives that, that consciousness and that fear. And that nagging doubt makes us feel small. And it's create, it, this actually creates moments when we feel like, you know, what we did was not enough and that we need to do more, a lot more with the time that we have left in this world. And that sometimes can lead to despair. And this is where it's important for us to remember that it is, it is not the direction that Allah wants us to take. However, this is one of the things that Allah you know, has given to us, has done to us, so that we are constantly reminded. And that nagging feeling also is the reason why we have the fear of day of judgment in us. On the day when all of us, whether we believe in Allah or we don't, whether we believe in, in, in 
you know, Allah being the creator of the universe, there is a day of judgment. So our good deeds, hopefully, inshallah, will be sufficient for us. And that is, you know, that is what will keep us away from the hellfire. Then we read the verses in the Quran where Allah gives us glad tidings. Allah tells us that when we do good, that one good deed is multiplied many times over. And that one sin we commit is only counted against us once. Um, I touched on this briefly some time ago, you know, where I mentioned that when we talk about our sins, you know, thinking about it is one thing, but actually acting upon it is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala counts it again. So it's, it's a blessing and mercy from Allah to say that each good deed is multiplied many times over. And this should get us excited. So it should expand our feeling inside of our heart to say, you know, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than any despair that we might feel or that might overcome us in the course of our day-to-day -day living. Now, Allah paints a lovely picture for us also about heaven. And this is a place where we will find ourselves fulfilled and our hearts will be expanded with gratitude for this mercy uh, from Allah. And our wealth is another way to think about the contraction and expansion of Allah's mercy. You know, in Surah Baqarah, verse 245, Allah tells us, who will lend to Allah a good loan, which Allah will multiply many times over. And it is Allah alone who decreases and increases wealth. And to him, you will all be returned. Now, our wealth in this world comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything that we have in our lives that makes our lives easier uh, is a blessing, is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And giving it away in charity and reducing this wealth is a way for us to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's told to us in the Quran, you know, this act of reducing our wealth for the sake of Allah is a reminder. Now, we entered this world in a clean slate, nothing written down. We will leave this world with a slate that is filled with our good deeds and our bad deeds. So this should be a reminder for us that a way for us to give away our wealth is to increase those good deeds. Now, you know, an example of this contraction and expansion of gifts can also be seen in the life of Yusuf alayhi salam. You know, the story of Yusuf alayhi salam is well detailed in the Quran. There's a chapter even devoted to this. You can read about this in the Quran, about all the major events that took place in the life of Yusuf alayhi salam. Even as a young person, you, you recognize from his story that his brothers treated him poorly. He was sold off into slavery. He was locked up in a prison. And when you get into this situation where you're sold into slavery or you have this type of bondage, it is, it is like you have nothing. Everything's been taken away from you, your freedom, your ability to make decisions that benefit yourself and so on. And then all of this goes away almost overnight when the king of Egypt, who needed an interpreter for a dream that he had had and said that, you know, was told about Yusuf alayhi salam in, in prison. And as the story goes, you know, eventually the king of Egypt um, appoints Yusuf alayhi salam as a caretaker of the food storehouses. And this position is a position of immense power. And, you know, Yusuf alayhi salam, again, going from a place where he had nothing to a place we had tremendous, where he had no more need, is, again, a reflection of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he uses this, uh, this power given to him to help not only the people of Egypt, but also his brother who treated him poorly and sets an example for them. And throughout this entire experience, Yusuf alayhi salam doesn't give up hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides to who he wills and takes away from who he wills. And being in a state of destitute, as Yusuf alayhi salam was, means that, you know, there's no opportunity that, you know, you won't have more later in life. So, again, keeping in mind that this theme of opposites uh, in, in all of these six attributes, Yusuf alayhi salam, everything gone and then he gets more than he needs in his lifetime. And then holding on to our, brief, uh, our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, this is something that's, that's very important. Despair is not something that we want in our life ever. Uh, one such reminder is in Surah Zumar verse 52, do they not know that Allah gives abundant or limited provisions to whoever he wills? And surely in this are signs for people who believe. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also al hafid and a Rafi, the abaser and the exalter. An abaser is one who brings uh, to shame and reduces someone in rank and status or humbles them or makes them gentle. The exalter is one who elevates and increases someone in rank and status and makes them honorable. Now, linguistically, again, speaking, 
Khafid, the root word of Khafid is Kha, Fa, and Da, which means to lower, to weaken, to make humble. And the root word for Rafi is Ra, Fa, and Ain, which means to raise or elevate, to make higher honorable. And this idea of reducing others in status while elevating others is a theme we can find once again in the Quran. And one of those places is in Surah Al Waqiyah, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, Iza waqa'ati al waqiyah, laysa li waqa'atiha kaziba, hafizatur rafiyah. When the inevitable event takes place, then no one can deny it has come. It will debase some and elevate others. Clear warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there is a day and for which that day has no doubt, and that is the day of judgment. Whether we believe in Allah or not, this day is going to come. And on that day, Allah is telling us that unlike this world where there's injustice all around us, some people will be elevated in status while others will find themselves humiliated and punished. Now, who are those people who will be elevated on the day of judgment? So Allah SWT is reminding us that the righteous on that day will be elevated in rank and they will find themselves in paradise. While those who are wicked or have transgressed against themselves or Allah or, the, or Allah's creations will find themselves humiliated and they will find themselves in the hellfire. And the punishment of the hellfire is again described very, very uh, clearly in the Quran. Now, as people, we too have the ability to reduce and elevate ourselves and others in rank. And we do this consciously and we also do this unconsciously. You know, one example to think about is education. There's such a premium in today's um, world for education. And think about for those of us who have more higher education degrees than others, do we then within our hearts feel elevated compared to the rest of us who may not have as many degrees or even a degree? How about those of us with more wealth than others? Another thing that keeps us grounded into this world, you know, do we feel elevated compared to those who may not have as much wealth, you know, or more so do we elevate over others, those with more education or wealth over those who may not be so educated or wealthy. And we ourselves are prone to elevating false narratives and false statements, uh, you know, and, and plenty of examples of those in social media where you can, you know, find a story and you think it's, it's real and relatable. And before we know it, we're, we're forwarding it on as well, whether intentionally or unintentionally. And we're also as people able to elevate the truth and do all the things that are good. And when we elevate that which is good and reduce in rank that which is false, we are then aligning ourselves with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And let's just remind ourselves, inshallah, that we will always do the things that will elevate the truth and always do the things that will reduce in rank that which is false. And this is where we can give each other more dignity um, in the world that we live in. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also al-mu'iz and al-mudil. And al-mu'iz means the giver of glory or honor. And al-mudil means the one who dishonors or humiliates. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives glory and honor to whoever he wills and takes away honor and glory from whoever he wills. Linguistically speaking, the root of uh, mu'iz is ayn za za, which means to be elevated exalted, noble, and illustrious. And the root word for mudil is the lam lam, which means to be low, contemptible, or despicable. Now immediately, it seems that these attributes are very similar to al-hafid and al-rafi. However, they are different. These attributes refer to giving dominion and taking away dominion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give dominion and take away dominion from anyone. But what does true dominion look like? True dominion is to be free from the shame of need, from the dominance of passion and the disgrace of ignorance. To have that level of control where none of those things can overpower you. And to have dominion in this world is to be free from the attractions of this world, the desires we have for this world. And to have dominion in this world is to have freedom to conduct the affairs of our soul in a manner that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we do so, Inshallah khair, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will honor us. And whosoever Allah honors is rewarded, not just in this world, but also in the next life. In Surah Al-Fajr, verse 27 through 30, we are told, Allah will say, Allah will say to the righteous, O tranquil soul, return to your Lord well-pleased. 
with him and well-pleasing to him. So join my servants and enter my paradise. And a tranquil soul is one that has found dominion over its desires, being pleased with the provision supplied by Allah. So what does dishonor look like? One example can be found in Surah Al-Hadid, verses 14 and 15. The tormented will cry out to those disgraced, were we not with you? They will reply, yes, you were, but you chose to be tempted by hypocrisy, eagerly awaited our demise, doubted the truth, and were deluded by false hopes until Allah's decree of your death came to pass. And so the chief deceiver deceived you about Allah. So today, no ransom will be accepted from you hypocrites, nor from the disbelievers. Your home is the fire. It is only fitting place for you. What an evil destination. So there's a lot of detail here in these two verses in Surah Al-Hadid. Now being dishonored then is to find ourselves in the hellfire on the day of judgment. And being dishonored is allowing our actions to prevent us from earning the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is being bound by this world such that we forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or not believe in the day of judgment. And our actions can lead us either to being honored by Allah or towards being dishonored. And should we choose to seek the pleasure of Allah, then we seek to receive honor from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to the contrary, should we seek to find honors from Allah's creation, we will find ourselves disappointed on the day of judgment. My dear brothers and sisters, inshallah, we'll conclude this khutbah in the second half. Akuluk awli haza, wastaghfirullahi li walakum, walisair al-muslimin, fastaghfiruhu, innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim I seek forgiveness from Allah for me and for you and to the rest of the Muslims. So ask for him for forgiveness. He is the forgiver, the merciful. <clears throat> Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the name of Allah, the exalted, and blessings and peace be upon the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear respected brothers and sisters, I briefly touched today on six of the beautiful names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are commonly paired together. By contemplating about these attributes, we always seek to bring ourselves closer to our creator. And that's usually our goal, um, whether daily or weekly. And by seeking the pleasure of Allah, we are working towards elevating ourselves, not just in this world, but also inshallah in the hereafter. And these Fridays are like reminders for us. And let's remember that this world, like all of Allah's creation, is going to end one day. And one day we will find ourselves in front of our creator being judged for our actions for what we have said and for what we do. And let's recap the nature of these six attributes we discussed about today. You know, these attributes focus on taking and giving. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes away from who he wills and he gives to who he wills. Whether it's taking away our status in this world or giving us status in this world, nothing is outside the realm of possibilities with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these attributes should remind us to connect ourselves with Allah on a regular basis because to him is our return. And these attributes should also remind us to ask Allah for help in all that we do. Because dominion over our desires or dominion over this world, meaning our control over this world or our control over our desires is a constant struggle, never ending until the day we pass. And it's not something that we can overcome alone, whether it's the want for more uh, wealth, whether it's the want for more children, whether it's the want for a longer life. Each one of these things, um, you know, nag at us on a daily basis. So it's important that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the strength to overcome these things so that we may focus on the things that will be beneficial for us, not just in this world, but also inshallah in the hereafter. And we all have a common gift from Allah. And this is a gift that we should not take lightly. It's the freedom of will. And this gift allows us to choose our actions. So if we are finding ourselves that we have a choice to do something good versus something that isn't good, we should always remind ourselves that if we are, if we are caught dead in the act of doing something that is not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that could be the last act that we perform. Similarly, if we find ourselves saying something that would not be pleasing to Allah and that in that moment we find ourselves taken away, then that would be the last thing that we would be saying. And, and that may not be you know, the best of ways to find ourselves in. So this freedom is, you know, not to sound cliche, it comes with, you know, great responsibility. And it's important for us to not just grow in knowledge about our creator, but also over time act on this knowledge. 
So this gift, my dear brothers and sisters, is one that we should not take for granted. And this is a gift that we can gain. With this gift, we can gain dominion, not over just this world, but also over cells, our desires. So inshallah, you know, may Allah gives us the wisdom and guidance to act on the knowledge so that we may have the ability to overcome our basal instincts, overcome our desires, overcome things that disconnect us from Allah and keep us connected to this world. So when you have time, inshallah, this is an advice I give to myself first before I, I ask you is spend some time today to reflect. We have a lot of hardships in this world, much of which we are shielded from living in the United States, living in our community here in Austin, Texas. So it's important for us to recognize that and inshallah, uh, hopefully we will we will find it within ourselves to reconnect with Allah on a regular basis. It doesn't take much, you know, turn on the news and there's all kinds of uh, uh, horrible things that, that, that attack us in, in the way of information. So um, very important for us to remind ourselves that, you know, the safety and security that we enjoy is not something that we should take for granted. I hope you found, um, found this information uh, useful today. Uh, let's pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides our hearts towards him. And may we all find inside our heart the strength to stay firm in the path of Allah. And may Allah forgive all of our shortcomings, for he is oft forgiving, most merciful. O Allah, when we stray, please forgive us and allow us to return back to guidance and the path that you have prescribed for those who you have believed in you. O Allah, please improve us in character so that we may become better versions of ourselves. And please have mercy upon our parents and pardon their transgressions and shortcomings. And please have mercy upon our community, community members uh, many of whom may not be with us today. And please have mercy upon us all in the day of judgment and keep us away from the torments of the grave. And please allow us to live a dignified life in this world and the hereafter. And please guard our health, the health of those who we love and the health of those who endeavor to provide care and service to our members in the community uh, who are in need. Rabbana, la tuzih kulubana ba'da iz hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahma innaka antal wahab. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasna wa fil akhirati hasna wa kina azab al-nar. Rabbana faqfir lana zunubana wa kafir anna sayyiatina wa tuwafana ma'al abrar. Allahumma innaka afun tuhibu lafwa fafu anni. Allahumma innaka afun tuhibu lafwa fafu anni. Rabbir hamhuma kama rabbayani saghira. Inna allaha ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i zil qurba wa yanha'an al fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. Ya izzukum la allakum tazakkaroon. Fazkuruni azkurkum wa shkuruli wa la takfuroon. My dear brothers and sisters, inshallah, may you have a blessed Jummah. And uh, assalamu alaikum.